How's it going guys? Hope you all are doing well. Today I'm going to show you guys how to install RetroPie on your Raspberry Pi 4. This is a super easy method. They made it easier than ever and by following these steps should have you up and running in less than 30 minutes. Let's start out with what you're going to need. Of course you're going to need a Raspberry Pi 4. The Pi 4 that I got is the 8GB model. It came in this neat little kit that came with a case, a couple of heat sinks, and a cooling fan along with a power supply and HDMI cable. Pretty much everything you'll need. I'll put a link to it in the description below if you guys are interested. Up next you're going to need a micro SD card. This is what you're going to flash RetroPie onto. Me personally, I would recommend using something 32 gigs or higher. As you can see right here, I got a 64 gig. I plan on loading this sucker up with a ton of games, so I feel like the more memory, the better. Up next, you're going to need a USB thumb drive. This is what you're going to use to transfer games over from your computer to the Raspberry Pi. This one is a 32 gigabyte, doesn't need to have a ton of memory, just enough to fit whatever games you want. You can always make double trips and add more games at your leisure. And lastly, of course, you're going to need a PC of some kind. I'm going to be using a Windows PC, but you can do this on a Mac as well. So let's head on over to our PC and we're going to install this program called Raspberry Pi Imager. I'll put a link to where you could get this in the description. We're going to go ahead and click the download. Since I'm running Windows, I will be clicking download for Windows. If you're using a Mac, click download for Mac, so on and so forth. We're going to let it do its thing and completely install, and then we're going to come back to it when it's done. So once the program is done installing, we're going to pop in our micro SD card into our PC. We're going to use the tab to the farthest left to select what operating system we want to use. We're going to highlight the option that says emulation and game OS. Once you do that, you're going to see two options, one for RetroPie, the other one for recall box. You're going to go ahead and select RetroPie. You're then going to pick which Raspberry Pi you're using. We're using a Raspberry Pi 4, so we're going to go all the way down and select the option that says Raspberry Pi 4 slash 400. After we click that, we're going to move on over to the middle tab and select our micro SD card that we just entered in the computer. Once we pick that, we're going to click right. All existing data will be deleted. Select yes. Now this could take a while, probably under 10 minutes. So just sit back, relax, and let it do its thing. Once it's done writing the image, it's going to go through a verification process. This should take about another minute or so. So just hang tight and let it do its work. Once it's all done, you'll get this message saying that it's successfully been written to your device and you can now remove the SD card from the reader. Go ahead, click continue, take out the SD card, and let's head over to the Pi. Once the micro SD card is placed into the Raspberry Pi, go ahead and power it on. The first boot up might take a while, so just be patient with it. Once it's done fully loading, you should be at the main menu. This is when it's going to give you the option to configure whatever gamepad you have plugged in. I'm using an Xbox One controller, but there are a ton of controller options available for the Raspberry Pi. Once that's all done, you can see there's nothing else on the Pi except for RetroPie configuration. This is where that USB thumb drive comes into play. Go ahead and plug that USB thumb drive into your computer. On the thumb drive, go ahead and right click and create a new folder. You're going to name this folder RetroPie. Go ahead and unplug the USB drive and take it on over to your Raspberry Pi. Go ahead and plug it into the Pi and wait about a minute or so. It helps to have a USB drive that has a blinking light. This will let you know when something's being written onto it from the Pi or transferring over from the thumb drive. Wait for it to stop blinking and then go ahead and pull out the USB drive. Take the USB drive back over to your computer and plug it back in. Open up that RetroPie folder and now you can see that the Raspberry Pi created a bunch of other folders inside of this folder. You're going to want to open up the folder that says ROMs. Once inside that folder, you could see a bunch of other folders with names of various game consoles. This is where you're going to place the games that correspond with whatever console you're trying to emulate. Right here, I have an SNES game. I'm going to go ahead and drag this SNES game onto the SNES folder on my USB drive. 
I'm going to wait for it to transfer, unplug the thumb drive, and take it back over to the Raspberry Pi. Go ahead and plug the USB drive back into the Raspberry Pi, and either wait for the light to stop blinking, or if you don't have one that lights up, wait about another minute or so. Once it's done blinking, I'm going to go ahead and press start on my controller, go down to quit, and I'm going to restart emulation station. Once it's restarted, as you can see, now I have an SNES option. I'm going to select the SNES option, and there's the game I put on. And that's it. Now you have a fully functioning RetroPie on your Raspberry Pi 4. Feel free to add whatever games you want and follow the same process with the USB thumb drive, taking it back and forth from the computer to the Pi. It's as simple as that. Go ahead and game away, gameheads. Hope you all enjoyed. Until next time, this is Ness, signing out.